If you've never used Illustrator before, you might be tempted to use the pen tool to draw out your line art, which you can do, but to get the most out of Illustrator and achieve that clean and precise aesthetic of vector artwork, I suggest you try this approach. My approach to creating line art in Illustrator is to use my tools and shape modes to build my shapes as quickly and easily as possible. I specifically use the word build because you'll find that working in Illustrator feels more like you're literally building something out of building blocks rather than drawing something with a pen or tablet. In Illustrator, every shape and path has its own layer, and it's important to keep this in mind when you're deciding how to build your shapes. Also remember that my strategy is to use my tools and shape modes to build a shape instead of trying to draw it with the pen tool. However, that doesn't mean I won't be using the pen tool, I'll just use it when it's actually necessary. Our first example is a simple little house. To create the house, we'll start by selecting the rectangle tool, then click and drag to create your shape. You can also hold down shift as you do this if you want your house to be perfectly squared. And we'll just repeat that same process for the door. Now we can use the pen tool to create the rooftop shape. I didn't close the path into a complete triangle, but that is what you would want to do if you want to change the fill later on. For this moon shape, we'll start by selecting the ellipse tool, then click and drag to create the moon's outer curve. Now we just repeat this step to create the inner curve and adjust the placement with the arrow keys a little bit. Then select both shapes and use the minus front shape mode to finish the shape. To recreate this flower, we'll start by selecting the ellipse tool and we'll create an ellipse that will serve as our petal template. We'll use the selection tool to select the shape, then copy and paste on top. Select your new shape and drag it to the side. We'll let our cursor hover near the shape, and when the straight arrow turns into a curve, click and drag to rotate the petal just a little bit. We'll repeat these steps for the next couple of petals, adjusting the tilt so that they start to form a circle. To finish the other side, we can just select these petals by clicking and dragging over them with the selection tool, then copy and paste on top, select the reflect tool, and hold shift to constrain the movements as you click and drag until you get the right angle. And now we can just put them on the other side to finish our circle of petals. Select the ellipse tool again and hold shift to create a perfect circle in the middle of our petals. Now we can use the pen tool or rectangle tool to create the stem. Select your stem and send it all the way to the back. Now we'll copy and paste another petal, which we'll use as a leaf. To create the second leaf, select the first one, copy and paste, and reflect just like we did before. To create this cloud shape, we'll start with the ellipse tool again and create the top curves of the cloud. Now we'll use the pen tool to create a straight vertical line that intersects with the two bottom circles. Then we'll close the shape, making sure it overlaps with all our circles and covers any gaps between them. To create the inside curve on the cloud, we'll select this circle, copy and paste on top, and hide this layer in the Layers panel so we can come back to it in just a second. Once that layer is safely hidden, we'll select all our shapes and use the Unite Shape mode to merge all our shapes into one solid shape. Now we can unhide this top layer and use the Direct Selection tool to select and delete the bottom anchor point of the circle. Then we'll add an anchor point to the top right and delete the right anchor point. We'll create the sun using the ellipse tool again and send it to the back. Then to create our sun rays, we'll just draw a straight line with the pen tool and copy and paste and rotate a couple more times to finish. it's time to try something a little more complex and I'll show you how you can use what we've learned so far to create this shape. The first thing I'm going to do is lock my background layer with my sketch on it so that I don't select it by mistake as I'm working. Now I'll create a new layer by hitting the create new layer button down over here. 
I'll select the pen tool and before I start I just want to make sure that the fill is set to none and the stroke is set to black and I'm gonna make it two point so it's a little easier to see for the stroke I usually prefer the round cap and round join but this is up to your preference First I'll show you how I would create this shape using the pen tool because it's definitely doable, it just takes a lot of tweaking and if you're not familiar with the pen tool, it is also guaranteed to be a very frustrating experience for you. Now I'll show you the fastest way to create the shape by using a mirror effect. I'll just use the pen tool to trace around one half of the shape and like I showed you before I will select it, copy, paste in place and reflect and line it up with the other half. I'll zoom in and make sure that the anchor points are actually intersecting and as you can see down here there is a slight gap so I'll use the direct selection tool to line up my anchor points to the center. Illustrator will show me where the midpoint is by showing me the screen line and I'll do the same with the other anchor point. Now I'll just select both anchor points, right click and join to close the path. You can also use command J as a keyboard shortcut for this. This is a very fast and efficient method, but I don't usually use it because naturally this method creates a perfectly symmetrical shape. And if there's one thing I learned in school, it's that perfectly symmetrical artwork can be pretty boring. My preferred method is a little bit of a hybrid between the first two methods I just showed you. I like it because it allows me to create a slightly asymmetrical shape that is clean and precise with just enough variety, which makes it more interesting than the mirror image and definitely not as wonky as the one made with just the pen tool. I'll start with the ellipse tool and use the direct selection tool to adjust my shape to match the curve of my original sketch and once I'm happy with it, I'll copy, paste in place, reflect, and move it over to the opposite side. I'll select both shapes and first I'll make sure I have it set to align to the selection, otherwise it'll align the shapes to my artboard instead of each other. Then I'll use the align tool to align them vertically. Now I'll use the pen tool to create this V shape and close the path so that it overlaps my first two shapes. I'll select all three paths and use the unite shape mode to make these into a single path. I'll zoom in now and check for any extra anchor points. I do have an extra one so I'll just delete it by hitting P minus and clicking on the anchor point. Now I'll use the anchor point tool to drag out the handles and adjust the curve a little bit. And I'll do the same thing for the other side too. Now with the pen tool. I'll make a V-shape down here and use the anchor point tool to drag out the handles and break them by clicking and dragging on one handle with the same anchor point tool. Then I'll use the direct selection tool to adjust the curves as much as I want on this shape. Once I'm happy with this shape, I'll again copy, paste in place, reflect, and move the path to the opposite side. I'll make sure these two anchor points intersect in the center and use the direct selection tool to select both of them and join them into one path. Finally, I just need to create a shape that will overlap both of these, select all three shapes, and use the Unite Shape mode to make this into one single path. I just have a few more tweaks to make and then it's done. Obviously all three methods are doable and it's up to you to decide which one to use or if you want to pick and choose certain steps from each and come up with your own method, that's definitely an option too. The cool thing about Illustrator is that there are many ways to approach the same problem. How you do it is really up to your preference. Copy, paste on top, select the rotate tool, hold shift, and shift this thing. Whoa, come on, you can do it. Oh, 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 oh. there we go. 